Hello folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data, Hadoop, virtual reality, augmented reality and cloud computing. From this video and onwards, I am starting this data engineering tutorial series where I will be covering strategies to follow when building the data lake from scratch. That is, I will start by covering data lake architecture from storage layers end-to-end -end data pipeline and data governance perspective which is also very important aspect due to having various regulations like GDPR in effect these days. I will break down ETL to cover all the important Hadoop ecosystem technologies in each of extract, transform and load phases. I will also cover uh, importance of data strategy if a company wants to transition into data centric or data driven organization. Along with this, I will also cover uh, data lineage, data cataloging, uh, ELT, which is extract, load and transform and ETL, uh, which is extract, transform and load in detail. I will then move on uh, to hands on videos involving extracting relational data using Apache Scoop. Then I will move on to uh, writing scripts for ingesting flat file data to Hadoop data lake as well as accessing data from NoSQL databases like MongoDB. Extracting uh, click stream data as well as performing uh, streaming analytics uh, using Apache Kafka is also in the scope of this tutorial. I will also be uh, using pipeline framework like Apache Airflow to build data pipelines. Then I will move on to cover Apache Spark and Apache Hive to perform a data transformations and write necessary scripts as per the business requirements. Later on, I am uh, going to cover steps to load the transformed data as well as visualize it using uh, BI dashboards or some real-time dashboards to showcase the real-time analytics or real-time uh, you know, analysis uh, in the form of visualizations. In between, I will also cover various other Hadoop ecosystem technologies wherever I will I would feel it's necessary to cover them up. Please note that I am also going to post the content related to machine learning and augmented reality in parallel to this playlist. So stay tuned for this fantastic learning journey. In this video, I am going to discuss about what specific tasks data engineers do kind of snapshot of their responsibilities and uh, what should he be aware of uh, if working in data centric organization. I'm also going to cover um, in what scenario do you need to suggest or opt for building a data lake. And then I will also be covering uh, the need to uh, keep transactional as, as well as analytical uh, databases separate from data architecture perspective. Finally, I will be covering what is data strategy and why is it important if you are planning to build a data lake. So stay connected till the end of this video and this series to acquire complete knowledge. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. Now before we move forward, let's first understand what data engineers do. Well, data engineer is someone who knows how to build the end-to-end -end infrastructure to ingest and store variety of data like unstructured, semi-structured or structured data. His job also entails maintaining the entire infrastructure as well as scaling it whenever there is a need. Their prime focus is always on data quality and they should ensure that they provide the quality data to data scientist, data analyst and BI professional so that they can build machine learning models, perform analysis effectively. Hence, you can say that for data engineer, the product is quality data and not software itself. As a data engineer, you should be aware of organization's data lake architecture and you should be asking questions like what kind of data currently exists and where does it resides. To take an example, this data might be in the form of a structured form, which is a relational data we have in MySQL, SQL Server or Oracle. 
Then we have unstructured data, which is in the form of images, audio files, video files, etc. And it might reside in directory or blob storage, as well as semi-structured data in the form of JSON or uh, XML format, which is mostly stored in the form of flat files. This data might be uh, continuously generated in the form of uh, daily transactions happening at the point of sale or at the website checkout. You might also be receiving this data in the form of click stream when uh, customers are visiting your website pages, which eventually captured in the form of events. So if your organization have such a wide variety of data, then uh, you can propose building a data lake because here you can uh, build schema less design as against traditional schema based architectures. Schema less design are uh, more flexible and dynamic and can accommodate or uh, store any format or data including data for missing fields or columns. Now you need to understand one more thing that data lake and the database are not same. A database contains data in tabular and structured form which is very refined and ready to be consumed. But a data lake contains data in its raw form. Uh, it is heterogeneous and can't be used directly. So you need to uh, perform transformations like giving structure to unstructured data in order to make it uh, in a usable form. And this is the whole reason that um, majority of data engineers time goes into transforming this data from data lake into uh, usable and consumable form, putting emphasis on data quality. A sincere effort is needed to formulate strategies around data storage, data security and data governance. Moving on. Every organization has a core transactional database which is uh, associated uh, with its mission, critical and production application and which captures monetary transactions based uh, data. Uh, we call these databases as OLTP or Online Transaction Processing. Transactional databases are used to cater large amount of uh, frequent but small read and write queries. Now these organizations can also have a different type of databases which enables performing data analysis to identify the patterns and trends as well as performing some analysis in order to make business de decisions on increasing the revenue, starting a new product line or launching a new product category. So these are some of the examples. So these type of databases are called OLAP or online analytical processing and are used for business folks. The reason I'm bringing out the OLAP and OLTP concept here is that it is very important to keep these two databases separate from data architecture perspective because OLAP databases are resource in intensive as users like data scientists and data analysts perform more read operations than write operations on such databases so that they can analyze the data. If you have an architecture where both OLAP and OLTP databases are tightly coupled, then a resource intensive analytical query can bring down your production transactional database impacting the customer facing application. Hence running analytical queries in the environment where uh, transactional data is present should be avoided. Companies should therefore keep both analytical and transactional databases separate from each other. Now, if you are planning to build a data lake such that your primary focus is to have a centralized location where you can keep data from all the format in order to serve it as a single source of truth, then you should avoid blindly collecting data from multiple data sources. First, you need to have a data strategy which tells you the business problem you want to solve by building this data lake. If you don't have right data strategy, then chances are that your data lake implementation will fail. If you want to establish a successful data transformation, then you should know what value you are going to get if you set up the data lake. Now you might be wondering what are some of the values which drives many organizations to go for digital transformation in order to become data driven company. Well, the answer is increase in revenue lower the cost or cost savings as well as improvement in uh, regulatory compliances. So these are some of the examples. Now if I take an example of cost saving then I should quote uh, power of predictive analytics in manufacturing domain uh, and it is just an example I'm taking. So we can collect 
quality sensor data to perform predictive maintenance which is a way to predict when a particular machine or part is going to fail or stop working now this will help us to replace the required machine part proactively for continuous operations thereby saving a lot of money on idle time due to machine failure if i take an example of value in terms of increased revenue then i should quote an example where we can utilize the transactional data to find out what particular products customer buys often and when and we can do some market basket analysis to identify potential opportunities to upsell and cross sell the uh, other products please note uh, simply dumping data from disparate data sources into data lake is not an effective data strategy and should be avoided at all cost the focus should always be on identifying the business problems and then putting all your effort to solve that problem as a part of data strategy so in the next video you will be able to get the glimpse of various uh, building blocks of uh, data uh, lake architecture like various storage layers etl pipelines as well as things to consider when building a data lake architecture so folks this is it for this video to conclude i explained what exactly data engineers do when to build data lakes and why data strategy is important when building data lakes so here is today's question why do we need to keep transactional and analytical databases separate please post your comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also post your technical questions in the comment section and i will try to answer the same if you are watching this video and you you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you